Amen. Amen. Praise God, everybody. Amen. 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 Welcome back to another time of study. And to all our Facebook friends, we thank you for tuning us in tonight. We pray that all is well with you. We pray that all is well with those that are attending our in-person Bible study tonight. We ask that you continue to lift up our sick and shut in in prayer. Just lift up also the unbelievers, Amen. those who yeah, are man. seeking salvation. Lift up those who are witnessing for Jesus Christ. Those that are on the battlefield that sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue to lift them up. Uh, let's lift up the uh, Jackson family tonight at the passing of uh, Pastor Kevin Jackson. Kevin Jackson tonight. And not only him, but all of our sick and all of our shut in uh, tonight. Again, we want to thank uh, those who come out tonight. Have a real interesting lesson tonight. Hope I can get through it. So many verses we have to cover tonight. And we're praying that the Spirit of God will allow us to get through it tonight. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we come again, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We certainly thankful for your blessings of touching us and allowing yes, us to see a brand new day. Yes, and clothing us and Lord God both in our right mind and giving us a reasonable portion of our health and strength. Not only that, but giving us the wisdom and the understanding to perform the task that was before us today. Master, we come tonight as we study your word. We ask for clarity tonight. We ask that your anointing will bring clarity tonight. Open ears and hearts to receive your word tonight. And Master, we lift up in prayer of the Jackson family tonight as their hearts are heavy and grieving tonight on the passing of Pastor Kevin Jackson. And so many more, Lord God, uh, heads are bowed down and grieving. <coughs> we know that you are able to do all things but fail. Amen. We ask tonight, Jehovah God, that you would comfort their hearts tonight. Uh -huh. Lord God, bring, uh, Lord God, to them the comfort that only you can give. Yes, thank you. Master, as we study your word tonight, we ask, Master, that you open our eyes so that we can see the hidden misery or your divine word. Yes, sir. We pray, oh God, for the women ministry as they continue to move forward in their studies and their gathering. Also, the men ministry as they move forward in our gathering. Amen. We give Amen. you all glory for it. If it had not been for you on our side, there is really nothing else we could do. Thank you, we love you and we thank you for us. In Jesus' name, again, we pray. Amen. 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 Tonight, I want to deal with uh, doubt tonight. And because in the area of doubt is an area that Satan is known, amen, to attack many, many Christians. And oftentimes uh, doubt enters in because there's a lack of knowledge. And when there's a lack of knowledge, you don't understand the movement and the mysteries of God. And when you doubt whether or not God is moving in a way, we know that God moves in a mysterious way. And we know he's still moving. He's still active in our lives. He promised to never leave us and never to forsake us. Our lesson have a quite a bit of number of verses that we're going to look at tonight. And in fact, the same scripture that most of the scripture that we're going to look at tonight is actually going to show up on our Sunday school this coming Sunday. Our lesson is coming from Mark chapter 9. And actually we're going to be studying from verses 2 all the way to 29. But we're going to read verses 20. To so verse 24 tonight. Mark chapter 9, verse 20 to 24. And this is just set the foundation for our study tonight. Mark chapter 9, verse 20 to verse 24. And this reads, And they brought him, the boy, unto him, to Jesus. And when he saw him, straightway the Spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed for me. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said of a child. And oftentimes he have cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Amen. 
And straightway the father, this is our keynote verse, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Amen. 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 We, we did it with uh, starving your doubt and feeding your faith. Starving your doubt and feeding your faith. Of course, we all know to, to starve is to deny right. the very substance that can keep you alive. Amen. 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 And to starve one's doubt is to, as it pertains to our faith, is to deny the very desire of, of God's word. Amen. When you are not in God's word, when you are not studying God's word, or you're not somewhere learning God's word, doubt can easily enter in because you don't know the workings of the Lord. You haven't, you haven't built up a belief system Amen. in God. And so when you step out, so-called step out on faith, you're stepping out on shaky ground because you truly don't have a, a relationship with Amen. him. Amen. Amen. And when you don't have that relationship with him, past, present, or have a, 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 a desire for a future relationship with him, whenever things come up, you doubt whether or not God is going to move mm -hmm. in a way that you desire him to move. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we have this discussion, and we had a discussion Sunday about believers, right, not trusting God. The, the point we have to understand, they, you have to build up trust. Amen? If God have done something for you in the past, that should be enough evidence for you to trust him to do it again. And, and, and what we have we have, we have so-called believers who, who give lip service about their faith, but yet there is no evidence of, of a relationship with God. So, so doubt can easily enter in to, into a situation that can cause you to doubt whether or not God is going to move in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that you expected him to move. If we refuse to feed from the negative food bank that exists in our minds that always appear when you're trying to trust God, amen, you will, you will starve out the doubt. If you don't feed on the negativity, yeah. sometimes what we do, we tell people, other people, about your plans, and they throw monkey wrenches in it because they can't see or believe what you are believing. And so they shoot negativity to you. And most of their negativity is based on what you, what they think you can do. But see, we're not dependent on what we can do. We're dependent on what God can do Amen. for us. Amen. Amen. That's what faith is all about. Amen. Right? If you're going to pray to God and ask God to do something for you, amen, or you have a, a, a dream or a vision that God has shown you, you have to trust him to bring all of that to fruition. Bring it, bring it to pass. Amen? Our faith, on the other hand, deals with the very thing we cannot see. When you're dealing with faith, you can't see it. Right? And this is not what Hebrews, Hebrews 11 and 1 say. It says now, but the word now doesn't show up in the Hebrew writings. So faith is always right now. Faith is the substance of things Hope for. Yeah. Right. Hope and faith kind of goes neck and neck. They right there together. Right. Faith is the, is the substance of things hoped for. So when you're hoping, right, for, for, for something, faith is the very thing that gives you that, that, that encouragement, that, uh, that belief that it's going to come to pass. It is the evidence of things hoped for and the things not seen. <laughs> So faith is the only thing that we know found in the Bible that can really please God. Amen. Is our faith. Amen. You can, you know, helping folks, that please God. And, you know, <coughs> giving, that please God. 
you know, being kind and loving one another, that, that pleased God. But, but truly it says it's impossible to please God yet without faith. Amen. You, you got to have faith. You got you to gotta have faith to trust God. And even when you witness to someone that, that you believe that that person is going to receive what you're going to be sharing with them. Mm -hmm. You have enough trust and faith to believe. Father, you, you said for me to go and share. You said, therefore, go in, uh, to all the world, in all the world, all right, preaching, teaching them, all right, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You got to have enough faith to believe that the, that the Spirit of God is going to give you, right, to give you the strength or give you the power to witness to that certain person. So every, every time you open your mouth to share the good news, you got to believe that this seed that I'm planting in this person is going to germinate. It's going to come to fruition. This person is going to one day come to Christ. We might not see it, but you got to believe it and trust it. You, you can't start witness to somebody and doubt whether or not that person, you know, is going to hear you or not. If you start out with doubt, then it's going to end badly. And we're making this sense to you. I'm yeah. talking about, I'm talking about starting your doubt yeah. and feeding your faith. A amen. Amen. A amen. Now, just the lesson that we're teaching from is coming out of Mark. There's an extremely a, a lot of verses here that we're going to deal with. Uh, the disciples in, in our lesson today should have had enough evidence about the workings of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You got you got a question? Okay. Tell her no, she can't come pick him up. Uh, the disciples with Jesus should have enough evidence seeing Jesus and the workings that he had. They, they, they should. Mm -hmm. But you find them like children. Sometimes they forget and, and, and they forget the power that Jesus had demonstrated to them. Over in the 8th chapter, in the 8th chapter, Jesus had fed, 8th chapter, verses 1 through 9, mm -hmm. Jesus had fed 4,000. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Four, did you read that? You said that. I said that. Okay. <laughs> And I said that, I've said that, bro, not to, no, 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 no. But anyway, anyway, over in the eighth chapter, the disciples saw Jesus. They witnessed him feeding 4,000. They had also witnessed him feeding 5,000. So they had evidence that he had, he had dunamis power. Yes, sir. Dunamis power. See, that was wrong. A few of cutting y'all for I forget. Okay. God got so much power, the army don't realize. What I mean is, I'm talking about man. How in the world a man can feed, uh, feed 4,000 people mm -hmm. at one time? Mm -hmm. The army of people, these are army of people. Amen. This ain't what you call eating at the, the kitchen table, mm -hmm. eating at the uh, the restaurant. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not quite sure where you're coming from with your remarks tonight. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from people just don't understand. They just don't believe in God. They well, the mountain. let's deal with this. Let's deal with what you say. None of us was there when he fed 5,000. You wasn't there when he fed 5,000. So you have to believe what you have read in the Bible. So if you're dealing with somebody that haven't read it, then you don't expect for them to right off the bat believe it. You have to deal with people from where they're at now. Amen. Your witness of what God has done for you speaks more truth to life than some of the things that, that, that's in the Bible because they have not read it. If you tell them that I once was up, but I'm now not. Yeah. You see, you speak the truth to life. What God has done. Yeah. Your best testimony is what God has done for you. Mm -hmm. If you witness to somebody. Mm -hmm. But if you're not living what you're teaching, right. preaching, if you're not living what you're witnessing, they won't believe a word you say. You can't hide how you do. 
Because you can tell them that you're doing this, and the next time they see you, you're doing that. So when you come to them and try to witness to them, they're going to move on out their way. You see? So, yes, it, it's, it'd be tough for anyone to actually grab folk to believe that if they're not ready for themselves. So, yeah. so to bring truth to life, you have to share what's going on in your life. It's the, the best testimony, the best witness that you can give. Amen. 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 And I'm speaking. I'm speaking about uh, Joseph. I'm speaking about the disciples being with Jesus Christ, seeing the workings of Jesus Christ, and yet over in this ninth chapter, when this demonic, this the demonic spirit it, it had possessed this boy. And they've been trying to, Father had brought this boy to his disciples, and the disciples could not do anything. Mm -hmm. He in, in the other chapter, he sent them out two by two. Mm -hmm. And gave and, and breathed on them, gave them the anointing to cast out demons and also to witness to the people. <laughs> but yet here he is a father, have a son who has the demonic spirit, and they can't do nothing with him. What is a modest spirit, Pastor? A demonic. Demon. Yeah. Demon. A demon. A demon. You know what a demon is? So it's, it's a, some say unclean spirit, but it's a demon. Demonic. So it had possessed this boy. All right? In the ninth chapter, what he does, this is what Jesus does. He takes James. He take Peter, James, and John up to a high mountain. And they call that mountain the mountain of transfiguration. Mm -hmm. right. And he takes, these are the, the inner circle that he takes with him. He takes them up to the high mountain, takes them there to show him, show them his glory. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? If any one of them, of all of, of, the, of the disciples, Peter, James, and John should be the king as far as trying to keep the other boys in line for what they have seen. Because up there on the mountain, up on the mountain, according to, according to verse 2, look what verse 2 says in the ninth chapter. It said, after six days, Jesus taking with him Peter, James, and John, Leaded them up into a high mountain apart from, apart by themselves, and he was transfigured from his from his physical state of them seeing him to his glory state. They are seeing the they seeing the glory that he had when he was with his father up in heaven. Uh -huh. All right, verse three says, look, look, "Notice how it looked." He said, "And his raiment became shining." This is Jesus. Exceedingly white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. It, it was whiter than the whitest shining of the shining that ever appeared on earth. Up there on the high mountain. And those three saw. Yes, these three was witness to that. So that's Jesus the Son, not God the Father. Because when I when I read this, I'm just familiar with it. I was like, how could they when no one could see God? You know, this is I, this is Jesus being transfigured. It's the Son. The Son being transfigured. But then it says, Him and I are one. Yeah. So I, I, maybe you can explain a little bit how they. Well, I guess not because He's the Son. Yeah, He's the Son. Okay. He's, when when He talks in when He talks in emphasis of me and the Father are one. Uh -huh. They're so connected. He do nothing outside of what His Father does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said, "When you see me, you see the Father." Exactly. Yeah. It, it's just like it's just like uh, uh, if if my my son my son looks like his mother, but but if you have a child that favors you, yeah. favors your daddy, you know what I'm saying. You say, "When you see me, you see my daddy." Yeah. That's absolutely yeah. what he's saying. They they're so connected, and he speaks like that. He said, "I do nothing of myself. Everything I do, I do of my Father." So they're so connected. You feel what I'm saying? And he, he's called he's called the Lugos. The Word. In the beginning was the Word. He was the Word. Manifested in flesh. The Bible said he walked among us. 
he, he appears, he appears, actually he appears to Joshua. <coughs> In Joshua, he appears to Joshua, right? He appears to Joshua as a soldier. Yeah. And when Joshua comes before him, he tells Joshua, take off your shoes, for you're standing on holy ground. Joshua asks the question, are you for us? Or are you for them? He says, no, he's not for me. He, he didn't give no answer. But he tells give Joshua the command to walk around Jericho seven, seven times. Right? So he appears, he appears in, in Old Testament. Right? He, 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 he's always there. He's been con he kind of concealed in the Old Testament, but he's revealed in the New Testament. This is what he said. This is what Jesus said. Everything that was written, it was written by me. You read the scripture, he says in, 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 in John 6, he said, when you read the scripture, you, you think you have life. But actually, I'm the one that have life. You have life in me. So, he, yes, he, Jesus is the son of God. So he's been, he's been, he's been transfigured. He's been transformed from his earthly sight into his glorious appearance. You see? And when they see him, they, they see him, they fall down. Look what the verse 4 says. And, 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 and when they see him, verse 4 says, and they appear and they appear unto them Elias and Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. Some say, some say Elias and Moses will share with him what to yet to come. These are the two. These are the two. Elias was he was carried away in a flame on a chariot of fire. Moses, of course, Moses' really body was never discovered. The prophet and the law appears to Jesus on the mountain of transfiguration. But James, for Peter, James, and John, they witnesses this. Oh, am I going too fast? Oh, Pastor, yeah. let you go back to three for a minute. Right here. And his raiment became shining. Back to three. Yeah. His raiment became shining and exceeding white as snow. Mm -hmm. I want to do everybody know that that is as, so as no fuller on earth can wipe them. Wipe them. That, that fuller is soap. That's a soap. The fuller is soap? Yeah, that's what it is. No full on, no full on, no earth can wipe, wipe them. Yeah, that was a full of soap. Okay, uh, okay. No full. Of soap. Yeah, I'm trying to connect it to. Okay. All right. I just want to get that in. I'm no, oh, that. I, I, what he said, can't no, can't no soap wash it. Yeah, can't no soap so make them as white. Make as white as. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Let me see. Right now. Well, <laughs> they didn't have it back then. <laughs> I think they made their own soap, man. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you, Brother James. All right. Now, notice what Peter says in verse 5. Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. For, for he wished not what to say, for they were so afraid. And he, he didn't know what to say, but this is what he was saying. He's saying, let, let us direct some altars here. Well, let's worship what we see here, Elias and Moses. I like what I like about Peter, whether he was right or wrong, he always spoke out. <laughs> always, you know. <laughs> But, you know, one time he touched his mouth, right? Yeah, well, God had told him. <laughs> yeah. Like I see all that. He denied yeah. it. It wasn't a bad request. No, it, it wasn't was a bad request. He didn't understand. But yeah. he always spoke out. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't Except a bad request. that time with that rooster. Yeah. Yeah, well, Jesus told him. Mm -hmm. He started cussing. Yeah. And so we don't want to get into that. He, he, now, he, he didn't believe what Jesus had promised him, mm -hmm. that you're going, to, you're going to deny me. Yeah. He didn't yeah, believe I'll it. Never deny it. Yeah. To, to that happen. Yeah. That rooster crow, he said, it came back yeah. to him. Yeah. The rooster just doing his job. But the, the, but the request, the request wasn't a, wasn't a bad request. 
No. But Elias and Moses didn't show up for, for Peter to give them glory. Mm -hmm. No. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't for that part for Peter, James, and John to witness. They were there to witness his glory. Yeah. You, you follow what I'm saying? That's what Jesus is showing them, his glory. Why did three? Huh? They was part of his inner circle. You notice in the scripture, he, he, he always called John. Peter, James, and John. Yeah, Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, they, they come to a little farther with him. Yeah. Even after he was crucified and laid in the tomb, it was Peter and John that ran to the tomb. Mm -hmm. So it was Peter always the one outspoken one. John was the one, the beloved one. He claimed that he was the, he was the beloved one. Mm -hmm. James here in, in this particular text, this is this is this is not James the less. Mm -hmm. This is James, the son of Zebedee. I think it's Zebedee. Yeah, the son of Zebedee. Yeah. John. James and John, the brothers, cousins, brothers, brothers, brother. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was James and John's mom that told Jesus, asked Jesus, when you get into your kingdom, would you put my son one on the left and one on the right? Yeah. And if you, and Jesus said, it's not for me to heal. They really don't know what they asked him. Right. <clears throat> but he said, you will drink from the cup. In other words, you, you're gonna you're gonna face persecution. You're gonna drink from the same persecuted cup that I drink. I have to drink from. But to give you that, to give you that uh, option, that uh, to sit on my right and my left is not for me. It's up to my father. And so the other boys got jealous because they he asked his mama asked. Once they, they got jealous because they wanted, they wanted the same. They wanted the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so, now notice, notice what it says. Notice what happened. Notice what happened. Immediately after Peter had said this in verse 7, and there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. Verse 8, and suddenly when they had looked around about, they saw no man anymore except Jesus only with themselves. So Jesus, again, he, the heavenly father fought Jesus' father. God the father speaks out again. When the first time he says that to, said that, he gives witness to Jesus being his only son, the begotten son. When he was baptized. When he was baptized. Yeah. Right. Not only that, but he said, whom I'm well pleased. Yeah. Right. What he said. And he, he said to John, John the Baptist, had this thing to know, he said, when a dove land on him. Yeah. He would recognize that this was the this was the Messiah. Yeah. But when John when John is locked up in jail in the dungeon, he sends his disciples to ask, "Are you the one, or should we look for another?" He said, "Go back and tell John. Go back and tell John what you see. The the the, the blind eyes are open, and those are that are uh, knee healing are being healed." He's come in working the miracles according to what John the Baptist had been preaching. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So, so it's get, it getting rid of interesting here in the ninth chapter. Coming down off the mountain, Jesus tells them not to tell anyone. Or he, he tells them, he tells them to, to keep it to himself. He asked them, he asked them, he asked them, he, when he coming down off the mountain, verse 9, he charged them that they should tell no man. What things they had seen, notice this, till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. Can you imagine how hard it must have been for them to keep that to themselves? Especially Peter. Especially Peter, absolutely. Yeah. Because, he, you know, but they don't write about it. In their writings, they don't write about it. But they did hush, right? Even Peter. They kept it quiet. They kept it quiet. Jesus did a lot of things to reveal to them that he was the Messiah. Yeah. The woman of the well, he tells the woman of the well, I'm he, I'm the Messiah. Yeah. He tells her. You know she that, drops the water pot and go back and tell. That, that leper that he healed, he told him not to yeah. say nothing, but he went broadcast. He broadcast. Yeah. The man was the... Uh, what it was, when everybody found out about Jesus, 
Everybody gonna come and try to get healed. The come blind man on the side of the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. He, he he couldn't keep it to himself. It's hard to keep things to yourself with the, with the power of God had done in our lives. But he said he told him, and he in front of everybody telling him, but the the priest or whatever the enemy, he was running his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Who was running the mouth? Uh, the blind man. You know, did he go before some priests or something, whatever? He asked who did them, and he told him. Oh, this, this was another. Oh, okay. This was another okay. you know, blind okay. man open. I think that I don't know what it said. John. It was in Saint John. Okay, I just yeah, my bad. Uh, yeah. it, it was another. It was another miracle that he worked, and and then they, the disciples at that point were saying who had been blind for yeah. eight years. Yeah. Call his mama, yeah. call his daddy. This guy, was he blind or was he playing like blind? He said, he over there, you asking me, sir. Yeah. And he started telling me, he said, you preaching to us? They got mad at him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of that. But that's all right. That's all right. You, that's so your so reading. Much. That's so you much. That's your reading. Right. But the, in that particular incident, uh, Sister McCauley, they asked him who's sin. Mm -hmm. You know, did the mama say it? Who said? Because they felt as if you had you had committed some type of sin why, to why? be born deformity or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. He said, "No, it's the mama that's sin." It, it was for 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 them to see or to witness the power of God. Mm -hmm. right. Open his blinded eyes. But the but, but the Pharisee, the second court, questioned the boy. You open your eyes. Yeah, that's what, okay, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They question the boy. He said, "All I know, I was once blind, <laughs> but now I see." That's that's one of the one of the best witnesses yeah. you can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 you can see the disciples have have evidence of of Jesus being the Messiah. Jesus having power to do the impossible. They witnessed. They were with him, coming down off the mountain after he had shared with them not to not to uh, tell anybody. They asked Jesus a question. They asked him a question, and asked him saying, "The scribe," he said, "the he said the scribes have written that Elijah must come first in verse 11. And Jesus after told them, "Elijah verily come first. Truly, the word verily means truly, cometh first and restore all things. And how is it written that the Son of Man that must suffer many things and be set at naught? He, he, he said, This is he, the prophecy already have been written, already been done. And he confirmed that in verse 13. He said, But I say unto you, that Elias indeed come, and they have done unto him what soever they listed as it is written of him. He was speaking in terms of John the Baptist. They 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 behead him, mm -hmm. and then they did away with prophets that came because they weren't a part of the setting of court. And I think that's one of the reasons why they wouldn't accept Christ Jesus. Because he wasn't a part of the Sanhedrin court, he didn't he didn't teach like the Sanhedrins or or the or the Pharisees. His ministry was totally different. His his ministry were other people. Yeah. yeah. And where the, where the Pharisees and the Sadducees they wanted the people to look up to them, to go to to lift them up on pedestals. Where Jesus came humbly to all the people. It wasn't it wasn't anyone that he wouldn't go and try to heal. Oh, so here's another thing. When people think they know you, they thought they knew who Jesus was. Yeah. They say, ain't this Mary's son? Ain't this the cock of the son? Yeah. How you going to tell us yeah. these things? So yeah. they were really jealous of him. Yeah. And plus he had a lot of people following him because yeah. he was healing folks. Yeah. Yeah. He was making folks uh, get the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they were just jealous of him. But, but it had to be like that for them to crucify him. Yeah. Specifically so when he came out of the out of out, out of the mountain being uh tempted for forty days. Yeah. Before the night the gospel of Luke said he goes into the temple. 
And he opens the scroll. He opens the, 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 the book. And he points to Elijah, I mean, Isaiah yeah. 61, 61. Right? When he began to talk about the anointing, it's upon me. Right? To preach, you know, to expect the year of the Lord. Mm -hmm. To open blind and eyes, to set free those that are uh, captive. And, so, and then he closed the book. And he says, he says to them, in your ear it has been fulfilled. In your ear. And that's what he says. Is this not Joseph boy? The common boy? What seminary school he don't been to? <laughs> See? And, and, and they, they got angry with him because the way he read scripture and the way he interpreted scripture. And they, and they wanted to they wanted to push him off the mountain, try try to do away with him, but he he, he went through the midst of him. Well, you know, it, it would probably be hard for them to see him see them as God, because they looking at him as Joseph and Mary's baby. Yeah. 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 Let's take, take a look from that. It's it's hard for people to, to actually see you now who saw you, who grew <coughs> up with you. Yeah. yeah, because they're so familiar with you as a teenager and the things that we got into, and so when you begin to share with them, you know, man, especially me, once, man, I'm, uh, I'm pastor now. Uh, what? Well, shut your mouth. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think you had a friend that worked at yeah. What's it called? They couldn't believe that I was preaching. Yeah. You see. All the hell he been to <laughs> but that's who he chose. It. He don't mm -hmm. he don't go to the, the the finest of stocks of people that choose them to to carry his word. All of these twelve all of these twelve disciples was fishermen. Yeah, yeah. You know, not all of them. Matthew was tax collector. Yeah. He was hated, most hated by people. Yeah. But God yeah. called him. But Jesus called him to be a part of his mm -hmm. his disciples. Yeah. I have a quick question on that. It's probably I don't mean to go over this way, but Come on, go John on. and Jesus are like a click with um that one word. He only took the hymn to not a click, but okay, I'm just bringing it down in terms of click. Uh, okay, I understand. Okay. okay. So then how is it he stood by and let them cut John's head off? Because he was in the dungeon. See they 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 they, 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 they threw John the Baptist in the dungeon for what he said to the, to the, girl, I mean, yeah. to the king. Mm -hmm. He told the king he had no right to take his brother's wife. Right, that's right. right. They, they, they throw him in the dungeon. And then Salomon, he told Salomon was the one, he wanted to have some way with Salomon. Salomon said, I dare for you. And she said, if you dare for me, I'll give you anything in my kingdom. Uh -huh. She said, well, I want the head of John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Wasn't he skeptical about that? He was very. Because he thought, he actually, he actually felt as if John the Baptist came incarnated in Jesus Christ. Because mm -hmm. when he stood before him, he said, are you John the Baptist? Because he, he was curious about it. He really didn't want to kill John. He was actually scared of John. But because he wanted to stop her, and he wanted to have his, have his way with her, and wanted her to dance, he granted her her wish. And he beheaded John the Baptist. So did I miss out on some really understand as to why? Did she have something against John? Yes. Her because she said her mother. Her mother. Oh, her mother. Okay, after her mother. Yeah, yeah because her mother. He wasn't her. her. She did. Okay, okay. She I was the one that the king had took as his what? mom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. Right. He, yeah. he married his brother. That yeah. was his that brother. That was his brother. Mm. He got it. He got it. Yeah. Yeah. John the Baptist spoke out against that. It wasn't right. It wasn't right. Yeah, yeah, his, his mother. But it, it had, but it. But listen, listen. As you look at it, this what John said. He he was going to be on the decrease, right. while Jesus was on the increase. And once once John died, right? You you notice that Jesus' ministry began when he preached. He be, he began to say, "The kingdom is now at hand, right now." Well, see, John, John had did what he was supposed to do. Right. Yeah. So. Right. He said, no one greater than John the Baptist. Yeah. This is this is Jesus testifying on, on John the Baptist. Yeah. Okay. Greater than John the Baptist. Yeah. 
I just felt like somewhere or another he could have just made do and got in there or something. I mean, you know, John. They were cousins. Was, uh, 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 they, they were yeah, cousins. They, they, yeah, they were, so he fulfilled what he was supposed to. What's the first time they met? With the, with, with the Elizabeth then? Yeah. In the womb. And what happened? John, John left. Yeah, yeah. he left. When the second time they met? When he baptized. It was in water, right? Yeah. Oh, baptized. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And so you would think they would have, you'd think they would have some, Bond. some dealing with uh, okay. each other. Okay. Because cousins, we know to have dealing with cousins. We have family unions. We have cousins. We, we deal with them. But John the Baptist's ministry was totally different from Jesus. He was there to, to set the pathway straight. That's right. Right? To call, call those into repentance. Mm -hmm. To change from where they're at to, to repent to, so that they can take a different route from where they actually was going. Mm -hmm. and that's what he actually said. When Jesus came, Jesus came, he says to him, he said, the, the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. Yeah. He identified Jesus. John the Baptist did. Yeah. And when he comes to the comes down to the Jordan River to be baptized, J John said, I need to be baptized with you. Yeah. <laughs> right. He said, so he said, because he said, I, I don't even have enough to unless your face. He said, something to be so. Did John have power to do things just as much as Jesus? He didn't demonstrate it in any power that I know of. He had the power of preaching. He, 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 didn't, he didn't demonstrate the miracles and the stuff that he Jesus did, did. He but made, he had a power, he had power in his preaching. He made the way straight. Yes. You know. But when, yeah. you, when you're dealing with power and you're dealing with disciples, all the power came from Jesus. Yeah. 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 That, that anointed power. Right. And often now, this is what I, I share with the brothers is this. When 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 you preach. And souls and souls come. That's that's preaching with demonstration. Mm -hmm. God is showing you yeah. or encouraging, showing you that 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 your word, the preaching word that you have shared, have have touched the heart. Yeah. You see, a lot of times folks get up and walk away. You, you, you follow something that word be so powerful when the when the doors of the church open. I I, I moved away from the doors of the church open. I'm just saying that. God's arms are open to receive whosoever will come. People are still walking away. Because the word of God is, is powerful. It's a two-edged sword. It cuts. And, and some know that some in their hearts desire to be saved. Sometimes they're ashamed of the numbers of what people might say. Any more questions? Alright, so as they're coming down the mountains, I don't think I'm going to get through this, is it? But that's alright. I think Kevin will pick it up Sunday because he's coming out of the ninth chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. He's coming down out of the mountain, and he hears a lot of confusion going on. They're questioning his disciples about what's going on. And actually, they are... They are, are Probably, and I'm interjecting this into this particular text because it's not there, and that's it's not there. Sometimes they tell you not to interject things, but you got to understand the father had brought his son to the to the disciples for them to to, to, to cast out the demon, and the, and the disciples weren't able to do this. Amen. It, it starts here in verse 14. Verse 14. Look at verse 14. Said, and when he came to his disciples. He saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And perhaps he is questioning his disciples about Jesus and why they don't have the, the power to execute of the, the authority to cast out this demon. And look what Jesus said. And straightway, all the people, when they beheld Jesus, when they see Jesus, they were greatly amazed and run to him and salute him. When they saw Jesus, they moved away from the disciples, questioning in him, and they ran to Jesus, salute him, or, or, or just the word salute means greeting him, right? Greeting him. And he asked, and he asked the scribe, what questions you with them? 
And he always, he always protect, protected his disciples. I think that's what they missed about Jesus when he said, I'm going away. Yeah. To prepare a place for you. you and I, I believe that's what they actually missed about him because they didn't have to worry about food. They didn't have to worry about paying their taxes. Because he sent Peter down to the river and he, and a fish, he, and he commanded the fish, amen, open his mouth and pay your taxes. So they didn't have to worry about anything. But now he's he's questioning, he asked the scribe, what are you questioning my boys about? And one of the one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit. And whatsoever he taketh him, he tear him and foam and gash with his teeth and pin away. And I spake to the disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. They could not. That's, that's what all the confusion was about. Yes. They, they were trying to get the disciples to do something that they weren't capable of doing. Because on the other side of the other side of the thing, he said, this is the only come out by fast and pray. This is what he said to his disciples. You, you get it with a lot of people like that. Let's say all the disciples around and and they kind of uh, cast the spirit out. But then you got people around him and they just say you lay a hand on it and don't come out of people. Or they can't do it. They, it, it gives you that doubt. Maybe I can't do it. But you know, sometimes you just gotta go with what God you got to go with what God says. Yeah. yeah. Just if you, you believe, just trust in it. Yeah. Because people will make you doubt. <laughs> yes. It is a it is a two part thing in healing. It's it's two parts to it. In, in, in whenever and I say two parts because I'm, I'm going to take the example from the Bible. This is what Jesus said: Your faith can make you whole. Amen. It is it is it is that belief. That, that, that you believe in the man of God to lay hands on you that he can heal you. Amen. They have to have the faith to believe. And the man of God has to have the belief as well. Amen. Faith. That, that, that the anointing of God will run through him yeah. as, as he can be the vehicle for healing. He has to believe. Mm -hmm. He can't doubt it. He has to believe it. Amen. Now, somebody gave my spirit to quick was the girl with the blood. You know, touching the hem of his garment. Yeah. Her faith, but he he said that somebody touched me. The disciples like, God, oh, anybody touched the me? Yeah. They yeah. doubted. They, no. I mean, not doubted, but they didn't. Was it that they didn't see him? They did not see him. Okay. They, they was questioning. Him. They was questioning Jesus. Jesus and yes. his, his question. Yeah. He, he was asking the disciples, who touched me? Mm -hmm. And yeah. and the and the response from the disciples were all these people that, that mm -hmm. around you touch me, you gonna ask who yeah, touched you? Touched <laughs> he said, This touch. Mm -hmm. When he touched me, he said the, the virtue yeah. come out. This, see this that particular touch that this, this woman touched Jesus was different than all the other touches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. With her faith. Right. Now now notice now, grab hold to it. He didn't touch her. Mm. She and touched him. Yeah. Exactly. And she only touched the hem, the little tackles, the little tassel of, of the bottom of his of his robe, and it ran ran out. Her her faith says, "If I but touch, yeah, right, I can't be made whole." You, you thought it's a two part thing. Her, her belief system. She believed. She shut down out. She completely shut down out. Amen. First of all, she heard something. She heard that Jesus was coming. Mm -hmm. Not only did she hear that Jesus was coming, but she had heard other, other miracles had been done by Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now she had an opportunity. Jesus is coming to town. Mm -hmm. right. Look at her condition. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's been hemorrhaging for 12 long years. Mm -hmm. And broke. Yes, because she don't went to all the doctors. She done wasted all of her goods. Mm -hmm. 
She's, she's <coughs> ceremonially unclean. She could not go to the temple. Right. She couldn't go to family reunions. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Right. She had to. She had to separate herself from people. Mm. I, I, I think that's where the crawl come in. I, I think that's where the crawl come in her and, and, and she humbled herself down to a crawl to get to Jesus because she's pushing her way to yeah, Jesus. Right sure, yeah. mm. Just a touch. Just a hint. But she believed. She didn't allow doubt to interfere to, to invade her mind. I had a situation where I, had, I think I had twins to see that. That was my first back surgery. And uh, I guess I was running around and one one way I'm, I'm saying I'm healed, another way I'm, I'm complaining about it. Mm -hmm. But when I made up my mind to just stick with I'm healed, it stopped her. Yeah. You you see you you saw it, right? You saw you saw actually what was happening when you when you when you focus on healing, oh, yes, spiritual God. healing from God. Mm -hmm. When you your mind was focused on that, you, you felt better. Amen. But when you took your mind off of it, right. isn't it interesting? Isn't an interesting scenario? We take a pill bottle that we buy from the store and we read it and we follow the instruction of everything that's on that bottle. Mm -hmm. Take two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, and we take them, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah. We trust in what we read mm -hmm. on the pill bottle. But here he is, here what he says here. Right? Trust. Trust me. And, but, but we're going to take him at his word. That's why faith has to be, you have to utilize your faith. In every situation, in everything, everything that you go through, you have to exercise your faith. In everything. Pastor, uh, like Brother McCauley said about his back, I had back trouble. I was going to a chiropractor. And he'd run that stuff on my back. And when I leave the office, I'd feel all right. But it wasn't long. It hurt to come back again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had been going to the doctor, and I'd been missing work. And one day I decided that, God, I need some faith for you to heal my back. And I prayed for faith. Mm -hmm. Man, that thing disappeared. And I ain't had no more trouble out there. Mm -hmm. And all them years I went to that doctor, mm -hmm. it was just temporary. But when I said, God, if I ain't got enough faith, give me enough faith to heal my back. And he did. Because I believe that he would. You went to the source. Hey, I went right to the source. To the source. I ain't, that's been over 30 years ago. I ain't had no more trouble like my back. You humble yourself to the power. Yeah. Of, of, of God. I say all I say all that time I'm yeah. going to that doctor, spending yeah. money, missing days out of work. I should have went to God first. Yeah. And that story, that story never get old, man. Yeah. Because a lot of folks don't realize their faith in that regards. Yeah. I see if you if you I just want to tell people, let people know, if you ask God to heal something and he don't do it, that means your faith ain't good enough. That's why I ask God for more faith. Well that's that, that ain't that's so true. <laughs> well, I am but well, in your case, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am but yeah. I ask for more faith. <laughs> yeah. See, and, and that's where that's where your that's where your TV evangelists they use that. I mean, you gotta understand they on TV they use that they use that you're not you're not using enough faith, you know, for me to heal you. Well, no, God is a you sovereign God. For God for the healing. Yeah, He's sovereign. Yeah, He's sovereign. He can heal when He want to heal. Whoever yeah. He want to heal. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, I think right. that right. when I ask for yeah. well, you got faith in life. When I ask for that faith, well, everybody we see in the Bible, why well, he here? He said, your faith yeah. has made you well. Not everybody. Not everybody. Well, I take said, that thought that I hear, it's made me not have faith. No. Oh. He didn't have faith to believe. No, oh. he didn't. Yeah. He did oh. not. We get to this lesson. Yeah. Yeah. This lesson. Yeah. 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 This is outside of school lesson. Yeah. 
Yeah. And when you get to it, this man didn't have enough faith to believe that Jesus could help. Mm -hmm. he, he, this is what he said. Let, jump over. Let's go down to the verse where he says, verse 23, I think it is. He says, in verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. This is Jesus saying to the Father. <laughs> what did he say? The Father said, and straightway the Father, he immediately said something to Jesus. Of a, he said, uh, he says to the father of the child, he cried out, said, with tears, Lord, I believe. Yep. He said, I believe. There's something missing here. Yeah. He, he, something, he said, help my unbelief. He believed, but this, he doubted whether or not Jesus has the power to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. To 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 to, to, to remove, to cast out the demonic spirit because the disciples couldn't do it or didn't attempt to do it. So, so doubt is hindering this, this, this father from sin. And Jesus already told him, if, you, if all you got to do is believe, if you believe, if you believe I can do it, that, that's, is that not in the scripture? He said, if thou can't believe all things are powerful to him that believe. If you can believe. And he said, I believe, but he says, he said, but help my unbelief. That's right. He prayed for God to help his unbelief. Yes, he's praying. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, because doubt, doubt is, it is, is keeping him from believing in but Jesus. In the final analysis, Jesus healed him because his belief was strong enough for him to be, to be healed. For the more to be healed. No, not exactly. No, not exactly. No, not exactly. Help my unbelief. Not exactly. This is what he he healed them to help his unbelief. That's right. Amen. That's it. Okay. You see, because he's because you, if you look at the look at the next verse, verse 20, 25. When Jesus saw that, that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. Yeah, he rebuked. Saying unto the saying unto him. He's talking to the demonic spirit. Right. Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. He's taking he's taking authority. Jesus is executing his authority over that dumb spirit. Uh -huh. Well, that guy that said he believed, that don't that didn't mean nothing? Yes, it does. He, he, you, you people believe, but they're not. Listen, a whole lot of believers, let me make this point. A, a lot of believers confess believers in Jesus Christ. Believe. But because they have no relationship with God or are not studying God's word, they doubt in areas where not God can do it. They believe. But they have doubts in areas. They are believers. They're believers. They have doubts. They have doubt in areas where not God can do certain right. things. Right. Eyes and offer. Believer with doubts. Yeah. And that doubts too don't go hand in hand. Yeah. Faith and doubts don't go hand in hand. Yeah. I can see right now. We're going to have some arguments Sunday morning. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. well I mean, <laughs> listen. Listen. <laughs> Doubt is a part of your makeup. Yeah. Just like fear. Well, yeah, that's that, that's that human side. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, you know, too bad he can take the thought out of his side. I mean, he wanted it gone. Oh, oh, no. Everybody didn't get Everybody don't. Well, that's that's, get that's to his point. That's to James' point. Mm -hmm. and that, he didn't heal him, but he gave him, he gave him, he gave him his grace. Yes, he did. <laughs> and Paul understood this. Mm -hmm. and he took it he said, "This what he it's in red. Mm -hmm. It's in red." He said, "My grace is sufficient." You don't pray to me, and I know what you're asking me to do. But he said, "My grace is sufficient for thee." He said, "When you are weak, yeah. right? My grace will make you to be strong." In other words, he said, "I'm giving you enough grace to endure the buffering of the enemy." That's right. So all of that you know, always removed. That's right. That's right. The, the same prayer that you pray before they amputated your leg. Well, you had to have a wife say you wasn't going to do. Well, you testified of that. Yeah. 
And what'd you say? Huh? What'd you say? What'd you say? Go ahead and take it. Stop studying. Well, after I prayed to the Lord, <laughs> he told me to let him take it out. But your wife had already said that. No, you know, she you said that after I had talked to the Lord. She said, you want to be alive with one leg, a dead, and a cat yeah, yeah. with two legs. Yeah. <laughs> but I said, I already done talked to the Lord. Okay, and that's, right. uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm game for it. Well, she was drunk for Right. Yeah, and uh, you know, right. Amen. All right, I got it. And when he said, "Where the guy said it?" He is coming out talking about appetite. I said, "Man, you ain't cutting off nothing." Yeah, yeah. But when I talked it over to the Lord, He told me to let him go and do it. Yeah, then yeah. I found out that guy didn't cut nobody's leg off unless it was to save their life, unless it was necessary. Right. Right. That was after though. But I've been making it pretty good. Right. Let me, let me jump down to 26. I don't think we need to review this next week. Okay. I think I, I'm confident in, in this gentleman hitting this very hard with every question you got. It makes it interesting for yeah, science yeah. But, but listen, whenever whenever a demonic spirit enters in and possesses that body, he really don't they really don't want to leave. That's right. They 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 are comfortable where they at. Doing what they do. Just doing what they do. It was because because they have to possess a body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if not if not like the like the one that had the the, the man that was in the uh, uh, cemetery had a, a legion of demons inside of him. Mm -hmm. Right. They 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 told Jesus send us somewhere. We don't want to go to a place. Yeah. We don't just want to be in a place for nothing. We want to be in something. <laughs> but in this verse twenty six, the the spirit cries. And rent him soul. Just tearing, he just falling on the floor, renting himself, scratching, scratching himself, right? Of him. And and, and he, he was as one day. It was so he, it was so the, the spirit coming out of him was so excruciating and so much pain that it caused the boy to pass out. Mm -hmm. So much so the boy, the Bible said as though he was dead. And, and Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast them out? So that's evidence that over there in the other scripture, they tried. Amen. Yeah. They, they attempted to. But in, the, in, the, in, in, in that 19th verse, he calls them, oh, faithless generation. They didn't, they didn't have enough faith you know, in themselves, mm. through the power of the Holy Spirit to, to move through them to, to cast out the demonic spirit. When you say faith but doubt? They doubt it. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't have a faith. That's another scenario I was thinking in my mind. I was about the boy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was talking to Jesus. Jesus told him to go home. He's cured. Yeah. That's another example of faith that I, that I was saying in my mind. I saw another story, but not. I'm just I'm <coughs> the faith. When, when a man went home, he's healed. Yeah, the the soldier. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Well, that's the soldier who's, who's who comes to Jesus and and, and tell Jesus that he had a, a, a someone at home that was sick. Right. But he said he he told Jesus he wasn't worthy for Jesus to come to his house. Right. And he this is what he said. He said, "You speak the word." Uh huh. Right. I know you speak the word. You know, and he, and he spoke to Jesus' authority. He, he said, because I have authority over soldiers. And they go and come and do what I tell them to do. You've got authority. All you have to do is speak a word. And, and Jesus saw that. That he wasn't a believer. He wasn't a believer. But for his, for his friend, he comes to Jesus. Right? And make a plea to Jesus to heal his friend. But he said, I ain't saw this kind of faith in all this. In all this. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a believer, but he had faith. Yeah. So so you saying the dad wasn't a believer? Well, but, it's secure. Yeah, I mean, see, when, 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 you, when you deal with believer, right. we're we talking from two perspectives. You're talking about the same perspective and the other Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. See, see, he said, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right? He did say it. But, but he had. He had unbelief. He, he didn't believe that Jesus could do 
to cast out this demon because they had failed over on the other side. And that he saw he saw a demonstration, somebody trying to do it and failed. So now he's doubting whether or not Jesus can do it. And Jesus already told him, all you got to do is believe and all things are possible. If you believe. And then he demonstrated, then Jesus comes and he demonstrates to him that he has, he has the, the sovereign power to do the un impossible by casting out this demonic spirit. When he gets down to the end of it in verse 29, he says, this kind, this kind, he's, he's talking to, to the demonic, about the demonic spirit because he talks, as he talks to the demonic spirit, he rebuked him. Right? He rebuked him. He, he understood who it was. Yeah, he rebuked him. He told him to come out. <laughs> and he and they obeyed him. That's the kind of authority Jesus had. He said, this only comes out of uh, fasting and prayer. Those, those demons knew Jesus. And yeah. he told them to be quiet, too. Yeah. Because they, they knew who Jesus was. So they was at one time, they was in heaven with him. They, be, they followed Satan. Yeah. But not, not in this particular case. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's how you have utilized. Here, here's how you utilize fasting and praying for a certain miracle, a movement of God. You have to prepare yourself before you do it. Fast first. Deny yourself. Right. Get in your spirit, of God. When you fast, you are denying. You're not denying the very substance of your body, yeah. so that you can be spiritually strengthened mm -hmm. to actually perform the task that at hand. That's what he said. This this kind. You're dealing with the demonic. He said this kind can only come out by fasting and praying. So so you have to prepare yourself. Before you go dealing with the demonic spirit, you have to prepare yourself for anything that you want God to move. You have to be very sincere about the things that you want God to do for you. Very sincere. I've got this scripture. I'm going to close with this scripture coming out of, I think it's uh, 1 John chapter 5, verses 14. In 15. And I always I always refer to this one. This I should know this by heart. I always refer to this one. Look what he says. John, this is John, the, the beloved one who laid rest his head on Jesus' breast. He wrote more than the other disciples. He says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, God. That if we ask anything according to his will. He hears us. We have problems with what his will is. We have problems with his will. What is his will? We, we know for sure that his will is that none should perish and all should come to repentance. But his will is also for you to be healed. Amen. His, his will, also he said, his will is also that you should prosper as your soul prosper. That's part of his will. And also, yes, no. All right. All right. According to the will. So you, you don't ask out of the framework of God. In, in other words, I'm, I'm not, Lord, I need a million dollars tonight. Yeah. I need to hit the lottery tonight. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give it to Washington Hill Baptist Church. Yeah. Half of it. Well, you you got to have some reasoning behind it that's going to glorify the kingdom of God. So you have to ask within his will. Then, then the next verse says, and if, if we know that he hears us, you ain't got no, if you ain't got no relationship with him, you don't know whether I hear you or not. That's what he said. Look at this. If we know that he hears us. You see that, Brother Woods? See it? What it says. If we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have. Right? It sets on knowing that he hears you. Because I got a relationship with him. And I'm constantly talking with him. 
I'm constantly praying. I'm not always asking for things. I'm, I'm constantly praising him. I'm constantly talking with him. He heard me. He heard me in time past, and I know he heard me now. He hears me now when I pray. Amen. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? He said, if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have a petition that we desire of him. That's 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 Bible right there. You can wrestle with it, throw it all kind of ways, whatever you want to do. Every what kind of way you want to do. Here's what I done on on on, on uh, I'm a close. Here's what I done on, on 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 Good Friday. I took my brother, and put him on the throne, put him on the altar. I know the altar. The altar is a place where things are being sacrificed. So I took my brother and put him on the altar. They was having they was having call to worship services and they were saying pray. And my brother, my brother, my brother here tonight, uh, Brother McCauley, says you have gone some have some problems. That Friday night, I say I, I preach, preacher told us who it was, call him by name, mm -hmm. believe in God to work a miracle in his life. Amen. Amen. Come back and told him. I say Friday night I went to Friday night. My 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 whole thing was to go to put him on the altar. My friend, Brother McCauley. Oh. Okay. So my belief is, this is my belief. I believe that God hears me when I pray. Amen. And, and we, we had a number of people on, on the watch, I mean, not watch night, but the Good Friday night, believing God. And so I, didn't, I denied myself, not me, but I, I, I saw the need for someone else. Amen. Amen. You see, that's where it at. That's that's where it has our ministry. You see, when you pray, not so much for yourself, but you have to lift up somebody else. Even though your body wrapped with pray with pain, think about somebody else. Amen. God already knows you're in the pain. Amen. He already knows what you're going through. Amen. So when you deny yourself and, 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 and pray for someone else, that makes a difference. Amen. 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 Listen, the women ministry will be meeting right here. Amen. Meeting would be meeting Saturday at eleven thirty. I don't know what their lesson plans are. And then we ask the women, those that are viewing by Facebook, come on out uh, and to to the women ministry. The men's choir rehearsal is at at three o'clock. Where the senior choir at one o'clock. Amen. Got a whole lot going on. So that means you're gonna be here, brother Joseph, all day. That's <laughs> all day. Saturday. Saturday. Wait, that's Saturday. Saturday. That's Saturday. This Saturday. Yeah. The men. Why and three. Okay. But who is coming get Joseph? Aaron in the morning. That's not us for Saturday. We get him early. You got to see him back early. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Take a look. Yeah. <laughs> Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to teach your word. We thank you, Master, that the words become life to us tonight in different areas, demonstrating, Lord God, the magnificent power of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. How much he cares for us. He always cares. He's always there. He promised never leave us, never to ever forsake us. We stand always on his promises that he have left on record for all of us. We know his promises are yes and amen. Thank you. So, Master, we pray when we pray, Lord God, not so much for us, but we lift up others, especially for our sick and our shut in. Amen. We pray, Master, that you would come to the heart of the Jackson family, yes. that they repair our homeborn services for Pastor Jackson. Lord, we thank you tonight. Give those who come out tonight safe passage back to their homes. Yes. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. amen.